Today, I am going to react to your trade proposals for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I went ahead and asked for people to send me their trade ideas on Twitter and oh boy, did they ever. I did not expect to get this many replies. So I wanna say firstly, thank you to everyone who shared their ideas with me. Even if I think some of you need professional help, I'm really grateful you gave me so many ideas to choose from. And you know what? I was confident that Cavs Twitter would treat this with the appropriate mentality and offer up some truly interesting proposals that are worth discussing. I have faith that Cavs Twitter will not let me down with any ridiculous ideas. And so let's start with the first offer I received, which is LeBron James for George Niang. Okay, moving along. Let me start by saying there are far too many Andrew Wiggins proposals for my well-being. Cavs fans apparently yearn for this reunion, the homecoming. Listen, if you can give me hoop mixtape era Andrew Wiggins, then sign me up. Maybe even toss in Akil Carr or Marcus Levette Jr. while you're at it. Uh, but I will entertain the Wiggins idea on two conditions. One, it's actually kind of crazy when you look at his contract now because I remember when the Wiggins extension was considered one of the worst in the NBA, and it still absolutely was. It was very bad. I mean, the Wolves gave him an extension on the promise that he would continue to get better at basketball, and that just didn't really happen. But looking at his contract now and the extension Golden State gave him, $28 million for Andrew Wiggins is certainly an overpay, but it's reasonable compared to some of the other deals we have seen pop up around the league. Keep in mind, someone is going to pay Bradley Beal $57 million in a few years, so under $30 million for Wiggins is not the worst thing. And if the Cavs can re-sign him to a more reasonable deal in the near future, then that would be a financial win when you compare it to the max extension they would likely have to give someone like Brandon Ingram, for example. And the second condition is something I already mentioned. Can we trust that Wiggins actually cares about basketball? I'm not sure he has ever cared all that much. The Warriors convinced him to take basketball seriously for one season, and he immediately became an all-star and won a championship. But then Draymond started punching people, and then Wiggins lost interest again. So there's some off-the-court stuff as well that he has apparently been dealing with, and I don't know any of the details. Uh, so I'm just a little concerned about how committed would Andrew Wiggins be if you traded for him. With that said, some of you are insane if you think the Warriors are accepting Levert and Niang for Wiggins. That would be a home run for the Cavs, but I would just imagine that his asking price is a little higher. I mean, granted, the Warriors have been operating a little strange lately. Uh, the Chris Paul, Jordan Poole thing, letting go of Klay Thompson. I guess there's no telling what the Warriors would do, but I'd have to imagine they're looking for more draft capital in that position. I don't think Levert and Niang are the most uh, appetizing trade assets for them at this stage. So uh, at any higher price, it just wouldn't be worth it for the Cavs. Uh, so sorry, I will pass on these ideas just because I don't think they're very realistic. This next one is from Precision, who is a great member of Cavs Twitter. And I just have one question that I'm a little confused about. How did you manage to get Stephen Curry twice on this? Also, I'm sure Precision is joking with this proposal, or maybe they're being held hostage and this was a cry for help. If anyone knows them in real life, maybe go check up on them. Uh, but it's, in all seriousness, I seriously think it should be illegal for any member of the 2016 Cavs and Warriors to become teammates. Klay Thompson and Kyrie teaming up in Dallas is sacrilegious. As cool as it would be, Curry and LeBron should never be teammates unless it's the Olympics. And above all else, Curry should never be a Cavalier. Some things are just sacred, and I'm one of the few Cavs fans who have really grown to appreciate the Warriors dynasty for how incredible it was, but you can't put Curry in a Cavs jersey. So moving along, let me get to some of the ideas that I actually like, the ideas that make sense, that seem possible, or would just generally be interesting to talk about. John Collins at this price is probably a little steep. I think Levert is flat out the better player, and attaching picks to get a lesser asset in return is maybe asking for too much, but Collins on paper is a good backup power forward to pair with either big, and this would be a decent deal for the Cavs. These two suggestions are also worth bringing up. I like the idea of adding DeAndre Hunter or Cam Johnson, even more than adding someone like John Collins personally. And while I shy away from putting Garland into a swap for Brandon Ingram, if the asking price ends up being just Allen for Ingram, you could definitely talk me into it. And if Herb Jones becomes available at that price, then I would do it in a heartbeat. As with this deal where they land both Jones and Collins, this is most likely impossible because it feels too good to be true. But of course, 
it would be a home run. This next one, I'm going to be honest with you, I would only accept this deal if I was being held at gunpoint, and even then, I'm not entirely sure. Um, Niang for literally anybody else brings me to another topic to address. I've noticed a running theme here with uh, most of these proposals. Cavs fans really want to get rid of George Niang, and I get it, but ask yourself, why would any other team be eager to acquire him in these deals? They saw him play last season too. Usually a player like Niang is considered a sweetener for these deals, but he's the opposite in this case. He is actively poisoning these proposals. They become less likely to happen when you include him. You guys keep sprinkling Niang into every trade like he's parsley, when really he's powdered bleach. Keegan Murray is fascinating to me. I would be thrilled to have him in Cleveland. He has a skill set that fits seamlessly with the core. I don't think Sacramento agrees to this trade, but it is a good one from the Cavs perspective at least. It's one, okay, Laurie Markkinen for Evan Mobley. Robbie, you're lucky that I love you because my phone nearly burst into flames. I respect it, I really do, because this is the type of bold take that will either look incredible in a couple years or absolutely insane. I guess it all depends on how you feel about Evan Mobley's development at this stage, because if he never gets any better at basketball, and you swap him for Laurie Markkinen now and the Cavs coast to the Eastern Conference Finals or even win a championship, then this is big brain thinking. But if Mobley develops into the type of player that I still believe he can become, then this is a disastrous move and it's one that I can't imagine the Cavs would make. It's such a risk that I think the Cavs would trade anyone on this roster not named Donovan Mitchell before they even consider trading Mobley. So I'm sorry, but I will be passing on this proposal. Levert and Ty Jerome for Cam Johnson. Again, I would take this deal in a heartbeat. If you can swap Levert for someone like Johnson, uh, and any deal for Johnson that doesn't include a member of the core four, you can sign me up right away. I will shuffle the supporting cast at just about any cost at this point. And Johnson, while he is not quite as good as people think he is, he is a perfect fit in Cleveland. And I actually think he is one of those players who looks better when he is surrounded by winning talent. You can think of Tristan Thompson as another example of this. Like Johnson is just okay in Brooklyn, but if you put him on a contender, then you can really see his worth as a complimentary piece, if that makes sense. Uh, back to the Yang topic, any trade offer to LA that features Niang has no chance of being completed. LeBron would place an executive order to nuke the phone that made that call if that happens. I think Niang would set a record for the most passive aggressive comments and subtweets from LeBron in a single season, but at least maybe JJ Redick and Niang could discuss a podcast merger if Mind the Game never makes a return. We have a couple Jeremy Grant proposals in this thread, and I think Grant fits pretty seamlessly as well, uh, but it just kind of depends on how much Portland can get from other NBA teams. If the asking price is this low, then I imagine other teams would be able to surpass the Cavs' best offer, uh, but I would sign up for Grant at the price of Levert. But I will also say Grant is on a pretty massive contract, and I'm not sure how realistic it is to add him to this core. Uh, so I'm not sure how viable this one is long term, but it does make sense on paper. Lastly, I would accept this one for Bogdanovic and Dorian Finney-Smith. I think bolstering the supporting cast is the top priority this summer, more so than actually making any moves as far as the 4-4 goes. They need to shuffle the deck with the supporting cast, and this would be a pretty sweet return for the Cavs. And that's going to do it for this video. I do apologize if I didn't get to your proposal. There was just too many of them for me to comment on each one. And I tried to lump the common ideas together to make this a little easier. I truly do appreciate everyone who replied. And I'm going to try doing more stuff like this in the future because I think it's a lot of fun. So if you enjoyed it, please drop a like and hit that subscribe button to support the channel. And with all that being said, go Cavs.